Um, one of the things that we're living in the moment, again, I know you're not on the operations team, but one of the challenges I see to be, you know, the, the, well, the thing that I see to be the biggest challenge right now, you know, as we're recording this at the beginning of September of, of 2021, is is just logistics. I mean, it's like I've never seen it. But in the seven years, uh, the cost of shipping is, you know, on another level. The time it takes to get from point A to point B is on another level. The inconsistency of everything. And we always had everything so efficient in terms of like we knew it was going to take, you know, 37 days for this thing to happen and, and, and 12 for that to happen or whatever. And we can plan it out like so perfectly. Now it's just like, I don't know, like talk about throwing darts at a dartboard and trying to terms of figure out what something's going to cost or how long it's going to take. Making things, it's been incredibly disruptive. Uh, I mean, are you guys facing the same challenges or, or do you feel like this is a a threat moving forward or is this something that's just going to shake out uh, over the next six to 12 months and it'll be a distant memory? Well, it's a, what I hope for versus what I think. Um, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah, it, it's been a challenge for everybody, right? Cause you know, I hear yeah. stories that they were 4,000 or 18,000, right? Uh, that impacts everybody. Uh, and, and, that, and I think it's challenging. It's, you know, how can you handle it? And then how can you find margin in other areas of the business and, and cut efficiencies. You know, we have a very strong supply chain team uh, and playbook. I mean, Wiley, one of our uh, co-founders has deep relationships in China. He actually lived at a manufacturing plant in China for, for a, a while to learn the process. And very so, cool. <laughs> yeah, we try to leverage, you know, our expertise as, as much as we can, but, you know, truthfully, we're dealing with it like everybody else. Um, and I, I do hope though in the next, you know, six to nine months, there is some, uh, you know, some relaxed fees, uh, but you know, and, until then, you know, we have to kind of take it on the chin. Yeah, I mean, I, my feeling on it basically is either one of two things have to happen: either either costs come back down, you know, things kind of normalize, or some sort of like this is the ignition to hyperinflation. I mean, we're already talking about inflation being a challenge anyway, but like these costs have to go somewhere, and business owners can't absorb them forever. You know, it's like I, any one-time cost, it's always like, okay, we're going to write that off. We can't really increase our pricing but like if this is a a long-term factor then everyone has to at some point raise their price i mean no no one wants to be the first one but at some point everyone's going to have to do it and yeah. you know, the, the, these costs are i mean it, depending on what you're importing if you're importing uh you know a container of iphones it's almost insignificant probably you know the, the cost because it's probably, I don't know what a container, $5 million or something is a container I've I'm just throwing out numbers and right. it costs an extra 20,000. It's, it's barely even throwing a grain of sand in the ocean. But like we, we've now got containers of, of cheaper goods where the shipping's more than the freaking product itself. I mean, it's, right. <laughs> it's gotten kind of crazy. Yeah. It's especially challenging because also Amazon is extremely price sensitive. They're not, they did not want you to increase prices. Yeah. I mean, usually, you know, you know, from just classic economics that usually, you know, pass it on to the the customer. Um, so we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. It is a challenge for sure.